gonna show you how to make a felted nudo scarf and this is a unique nudo scarf. See how we go, we're gonna do this together. I would stick to the merino and anything you know is soft alpaca. Um, this is just super thin. So when you lay it out, I know it's quite thin. And so it's going to drape properly. These scarves, I began making and selling them in the local cafe and people really love these scarves. They're really pretty. So if that's something you wanted to do, you could. Uh, they're really great gifts. Silks, I do find this the best one because it has the perfect drape. This silk is from Uzbekistan and it's Uzbekistan silk. And I know that silk farming and the process in which it's done, it's not, it's moving from the traditional way. It's a process of transition. That's the time that we're in now and give an exchange and support them directly. Obviously that's what we would like to do. Really cotton gauze works really well. So you could probably find some um, cotton gauze or some organic cotton gauze. Playing around with dyes on fiber is huge. It's part of my brand. It's part of what I want to do. And so I'm going to be dyeing this silk in this video. So nice. Comes in a 90 centimeter dimension, which is perfect almost for the felt scarf. So I am making my felted scarves 90 centimeters, so it's really easy to cut, so I don't have to cut too much. Um, and I do not have a good way of cutting silk. If you do know, leave it in the comments. I would love to know. See how we go. We're gonna do this together. I spent time developing it so that it's the right length, so that it drapes the right thickness as well, and so that silk spacing also helps. The most fun felt project to make out like this. I am going to put it at the very end. And so this piece of silk, um, this size, the 90 centimeters, um, should just fold over like this and match up with this piece. And so as you can see, it is just a tad, a tad short. I really hate the cutting part of the process. I'm going to dye all of my scarves because the results are amazing. Every time they're kind of a little bit of a surprise. So I'm going to put a little bit of water in the cup. All right, so a little bit of acid should be enough. Add my silk. If you leave more water in the silk, then the dye will spread more. You can fold it different ways. You could just simply scrunch it up as well. That uh, dye has adhered to the fiber. So far, it seems so good. And I'm gonna spread it out. But I can't make the scarf template any shorter because it's gonna shrink 18 to 20 centimeters. Actually, probably more like 20 centimeters and I don't want the scarf to be any smaller than 25 centimeters because that's 50 centimeters all around the head and that's a small head and so you want it to be 52 centimeters which is the average head size and 54 centimeters would be a large head size. It's going to be a small overlap. So I recommend splitting your fiber like this. I'm going to begin laying my fiber across with leaving gaps in between each piece. So there I have one piece laid out so far and I'm going to draft the fiber out. What you'll do is you'll just place your hand down at the bottom and you're just gonna draft the fiber out and then you place, draft. So once I have laid out my fiber, I'm going to spray it down with some water. You want to gently caress the top of your project so that the water fully saturates the fiber underneath. 
and you just want to gently lift your bubble wrap off to check that it is completely wet. Now we're going to flip it over. We're just going to flip all our edges over. And so the idea is to just lay the fiber out as evenly as possible, leaving a nice gap in between. And then you just want to give it a spray down. Fold to these edges over. Then I'm going to lay my bubble wrap on top. I'm going to place my pool noodle on top of the scarf, pick the bubble wrap up, I'm going to begin rolling it and you don't want to roll it tightly you just want to roll it gently but the way I've rolled it is quite loose it's not super tight and that will allow the bubbles to shift and move the fiber inside and so you just want to begin rolling your project back and forth and you want to roll your project approximately 50 times on each side so we're going to roll it 50 times and then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to roll it 50 times turn it roll it turn it roll it and the felting process is in a how to make a piece of felt video. And if you want to watch that video so you can learn how to make a piece of felt, it's going to be the exact same process. It has a resistance side, but it's still rolling the project in the same way. So you want to start off with a really light pressure. And as you do your rounds, you will add more pressure. You want to make sure that the bubbles in the piece are shifting slightly. They're agitating the fibers in order to felt them together. Now that I've rolled 50, I'm going to turn it and I'm going to roll it the other way. Sometimes I like to flip my project, but you do not have to, and I'm just going to fix it up. At this point, nothing is felted together yet, and so everything's still quite fragile, so I'm being quite careful. The merino wool should begin migrating into the silk after approximately two rounds. And as it begins to buckle, you can begin applying more pressure as you're rolling your project. It's very soapy, so I will not add any soap to that side. Once you have rolled your project 50 times on bo from both sides, and you've done that twice, you can begin rolling your scarf up in the bubble wrap. It's still fragile, the fibers haven't felted yet, and you still want them to slowly migrate into the silk fabric. And when you roll, you don't want to apply any pressure at all. You just want to coast over the fabric. And I'm rolling it approximately 30 times right now. I'm just going to take the bubble wrap away. I'm going to begin felting my project right on the grippy towel. And you only want to do this once the wool has stuck to the fabric, to the silk. Now I can roll it right on the towel. And I do want my towel to be nice and wet as well. We need the felt to be wet through the entire process until it's done. Once the project really begins to beckle, buckle and your fiber has attached, you can take the bubble wrap out Look at the beautiful results of the scarf so far, but it's not done. And I really love this piece right here. So nice, super nice. I want to kind of pull them out a little bit and make sure they're not folding over themselves. This is where the felting machine comes in. I believe you put your project in the machine and you could probably line up five or so scarves or maybe more if you get the bigger one. I don't really know too much about this machine. I believe it's made in Australia. I do not have one. And the least fun part is rolling the fiber and getting those fibers to attach. One reason why I don't felt as often as I'd like to is because of the labor intensive work that goes into it. And a machine would make it so that I could felt many more items. Like something that if you want to support my channel and you want to purchase a scarf, if you really like a scarf that you see, um, I am going to put them on my Etsy page. Look at this one. This one's going to be really nice. We have rolled it in the, the, the direction that it has laid out for some time. Now I'm going to begin rolling it in the opposite direction. It is ready to be rolled 
in the opposite direction the fiber was laid out and it's also going to shrink way less in that direction because the fiber shrinks in the direction that you lay it out in the direction that you roll it. You can also give your scarf a toss. And so what I'm doing is I'm interchanging all of the different felting methods so that the fiber has a chance to bunch up and curl a little bit. You can even roll it in your hands lightly like this. Felted scarves are not stretchy and so they need to fit over the head and they're only going to have about a one centimeter stretch to them, maybe a little bit less. It's looking quite nice and I'm very happy with it. Let me go check in the mirror. When this scarf is dry, it's going to be a lot more lofty. Nice and wet, refreshing. You will find that the ends of your scarf are always a little bit larger and they kind of splay out like this. You can roll your edges in a diagonal direction and get those corners to shrink up more evenly. You could also just leave them. A little bit of extra fiber along that edge. And if you do that, I find the edges curl up with the silk a little bit more so than they would if they were thin. You can pull it to the size that you want it to be at this time now. Once it's dry, it's a lot more difficult to make it the size you want unless you want to shrink it down more. You could re-wet it and re-felt it. Measure it and check your scarf and make sure it is approximately 25 centimeters. And this scarf is 25 centimeters on the dot. So it's 25 centimeters and it will have approximately one centimeter stretch. When I pull it on, it's actually quite tight against my head because then I know it's going to be snug against my neck without any air coming through. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope to see some of you out there making felted scarves, gifting them to your friends or selling them online or sharing your creativity with the world. These fibers, these materials, they're meant to keep you warm and they're meant to keep you dry as well. Wool is a natural water repellent and it's very important to wear these materials. It's fun, enjoy it, and don't be afraid to do it differently. Don't be afraid to do it differently than I would do it. Don't be afraid to try it differently than what people tell you how to do it. Don't listen to any of that. Do it how you would do it. Interesting stuff. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to watch more fiber videos, dyeing videos, knitting videos, I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be building a knitwear brand from scratch on this channel, and it's not something that's going to be instant. It's going to take time and progress. So like and subscribe. Subscribe to the channel if you want to follow me along that journey. My family is visiting for a month, so it's very likely that I will not put out another video. After that, I hope to make more videos. Thank you for watching.